Good morning. Welcome to this ongoing online course on architectural or engineering graphics part 2 and in this course we are talking about isometric projections. Part 1 of this course which uh, is already available on NPTEL is talking about orthographic projections. So, in this course so far we have been discussing about the planes, isometric projection of planes and we have already seen how do you draw different types of planes in isometric projection. They could be curves, they could be straight line planes uh, and in different positions perpendicular to reference planes, parallel to reference planes, inclined to reference planes. So, we have seen all the planes. Now, from today we will be talking about the isometric projection of solids. We will be starting with simple solids starting with straight prisms which is how we have proceeded with understanding our orthographic projections as well. So, there is a parallel which you can draw here. Now, before I go ahead and uh, start discussing about that, I will quickly brush again the fundamentals of isometric projection because this is just the fourth lecture and uh, we might need to uh, revise these fundamentals which is what I keep using in my drawings every lecture. So, again we have the lines which are parallel to each other in the object they will remain parallel in the isometric projection as well. Second the lines which are parallel to the axis any axis x y z will remain parallel to the axis these are called the isometric lines. All projection points other than these isometric lines are arrived at by arriving at their parallel distances and these parallel distances we are uh, achieving arriving by uh, drawing reference rectangles or reference squares which are parallel to the isometric lines. So, these are the fundamentals and we will see again how do we draw them. So, today what we are going to start is we are going to start drawing 3D objects. So, we are starting with these straight prisms. The first one which we are taking is actually a cuboid. It is a square base straight prism and a cuboid which we know of. So, this is what we are going to see how do we draw. Now, you do not have to directly jump on visualizing how this 3D object will look like. Majority of you would be able to do that, but in case you are not able to do because these are simple objects, you may be able to do that, but when the objects become more complicated then how do we do that. So, if we understand the step by step process, we will actually understand how to draw, how to arrive at isometric projection of any complicated object as well. Okay. So, now we, we see this orthographic projection for the square base uh, prism here. So, what we have is this square. Now, where which is this square which is seen in orthographic projection? It is the top view. So, we are actually seeing the top of the square base pr uh, prism and this is the front elevation one side of it. Now, depending upon how this prism this straight uh, prism is assumed to be kept we will be seeing its projections. So, for example, this is kept in HP and it has two of its faces parallel to VP and two of its base faces parallel to HP. This is the simple condition in which we can assume it. So, let us start by drawing it. So, I will start by drawing the top of the uh, prism. So, this is a square a simple square and we are assuming that it is kept parallel to HP this is what you will get very simple. So, this is the face the top one the top square which we see here. Okay. Now, there are four more faces which are perpendicular to HP, but they are two of them are perpendicular to VP and two of them are uh, parallel to VP. Right? So, what we have actually is this height. So, I will just uh, give you give the nomenclature. So, suppose this is this is A, B, C and D. This is what we have uh, arrived at here. Now, if we look at it from the front, what we have is A, B, uh, this, is, this is A, B, F and E. So, A, B, now B to F we have certain height which is given here. Okay. So, we arrive at F and we arrive at E here. This is what you see in the front elevation which is what this face is. Now, behind 
this E F, we also have G and H and how do we arrive at that? There are two ways in which we can do that. Now, we know that here this A E is going to be parallel to D H and parallel lines in the object will remain parallel in the isometric projection. So, we may just be drawing this parallel line. Now, the distance we might have measured only once. We could measure it again, but we do not need to because here again we can see this A D is going to be parallel to E H. So, we draw another line parallel to A D here passing through E which is what we arrived at and this point this intersection is going to be your H. Now, here I have not drawn the hidden lines, but we actually have to arrive at them. So, again D C here D C is parallel to H G. Now, I do not know where this G is I have not measured. So, D H here is also parallel to C G. So, we will draw another line here and wherever they intersect this is the point G and again C B and F G are going to be parallel. This is how we will arrive at this very simple square base pyramid. It could be kept in some other position ok. Let us see that ok not here. Now, suppose assuming that this is kept rotated at certain angle in the base. It is still kept perpendicular to H P, but it is slightly rotated. Let us see how do we do that. Now, here instead of this orthographic projection, what we would have is something like this ok. So, this is a square. Kindly excuse my drawing here. I am drawing very freehand. So, and this is what you will see in the front elevation right. This is how it is. Now, how do we draw that? How do we draw this square? All we have to do is again draw a reference rectangle ok. I have drawn a reference rectangle. Now, let us go back to drawing the isometric projection. So, I have to draw the square first which is what I am seeing from the top ok. For this I will draw this this reference rectangle first. So, let me change this color again and let us take some other color. It will be easier for us ok. So, we will draw this reference rectangle. See this I am slightly enlarging it just for us to be uh, seeing it easily probably it will come somewhere. I think by mistake I have erased that, but uh, please we will we will actually be drawing this reference rectangle first ok. This is how it is going to be and then we know where the square lies on this one. So, this is the top of the square base prism that we are seeing which is kept in such a way that it is making an angle with the with the V p, but it is kept perpendicular to H p the solid is perpendicular to H p. Now, we have this. So, we can again number this say A B C D I am just assuming this one. Now, we will start drawing the vertical faces. So, what we have we will we will measure this. So, whatever height it it has. So, this is say E. Now, we know that just as A, A E is parallel to D F and A D is parallel to E F. So, we will draw it here. Now, if you look at this, so maybe it is not very clear here, but we will actually in case it was slightly uh, uh, you know uh, at an angle. So, we will actually be doing the same thing at the back ok from B and then we will be arriving at the square in the bottom and this is what we will probably see in the isometric projection if the solid was kept like that. There could be multiple positions in which the solid could be kept and we will just keep repeating the same process. Suppose the solid is kept in such a way that it is perpendicular to the V p. We will start drawing the same thing again. So, we will probably start from the square end. So, I have a square end here ok. This is what the square end is A, B, C and D alright. Now, we have the height of the solid. We will keep drawing the parallels 
and we arrive at this. The simple logic is that the parallel lines remain parallel, right? This is the simple logic that we are following. The only thing you have to remember and realize it where to start drawing. Now, I have started drawing this use from this square face. You may not do that. You may choose to start drawing from this end. So, we may actually have E A D H being drawn here first. We may actually draw this or we may also be drawing, we may be drawing A B F E which is the the top surface. So, we may actually be drawing this and then we may be coming down either ways it does not matter you may start from anywhere the dimensions are all given the conditions are all simple. We could also be drawing the inclined uh, solid now the moment we have to draw the inclined solid what we have to do very simply is arrive at in this case arrive at one of the surfaces which is inclined. For example, suppose this solid was inclined to uh, say H p by 30 degrees and it is parallel to V p. Now, what will you see here? Very simply I will probably draw the first one is to draw the rectangle on this face which is actually the rectangle which is inclined to H p and parallel to V p. So, what we would possibly see here is so, I am just taking it away. I just hope you have already seen it properly. Now, what we have is that this solid which is inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal plane and it remains parallel to the to the vertical plane. So, now to draw that what I am what I am saying is we first draw this rectangle okay, which is inclined. So, how do we do that? We will again draw the references. Okay from orthographic you will arrive at where the reference for the top rectangle is going to come. So, for example, in the plan I may be seeing now this is for the top one I may be seeing that this is the bottom reference ok and we may also be seeing the reference in front elevation which is how we were seeing it ok. Now, this is the rectangle which we are talking about the top surface of this square base prism which we might be arriving at ok. Now, very simply we are doing nothing, but uh, we will just label it for example, this is say A, D, F and E. So, A, D, F and E. Now, we will do the same thing with the other the, the square base only the reference rectangle for the square base ok. So, what we will probably have is that we will have say a reference rectangle here another reference rectangle here ok which is going to enclose uh, ok maybe I am not able to show it properly to you here, but behind this has gone this was E F G and H. This is how the square the bottom square is going to come. Now, once we have arrived at any three sets of these lines which are isometric lines originally, but now not we have arrived that all we have to do is draw parallel lines. So, this A E A E here is parallel to B H. So, if we have A E we have already arrived at H and if I draw a line which is parallel to A E I know somewhere B is going to come again this E H E H is parallel to A B. So, if I have this E H sorry E H here and if I draw a line passing through A which is parallel to E H I will be arriving at B. The same thing we will probably do at the back like this and parallel line here ok I should rather I should use a dotted line here not to confuse you. So, if we use it like this then this is C. So, 
this is what we will see if the same solid is inclined. Now what I am suggesting is that if we have a solid which is inclined, we will not be able to arrive at the non isometric lines which are the ones which are not parallel to the, to the axis. In that case we will have to arrive at the reference rectangle. So what I say is view only view one of the surfaces of this solid. You draw the projections of that and all the remaining parallel lines can be drawn with a reference to this top rectangle that is the easiest and this is the methodology that you can follow very conveniently. We will look at more examples here so you will be clear. Now this is a cube, it is a simple cube but it is kept in such a way that it is rotated. It is exactly what we have just seen and all we have to do here is we have to create a reference rectangle ok. So, this is going to be a square. So, there is this reference square all we will do is we will create this reference square we arrive at the top points. Again since it is 45 degrees we might not be able to see. Now if you if you will see you will actually not be seeing a square looking shape ok but it is actually a square and then we will take the height parallel lines again from the back and actually what you will be seeing here is this something like this ok. So, this is again nothing but uh, like a straight prism just as we have seen in the previous uh, uh, problem it is exactly the same just rotated 45 degrees. Let us take another one for example where there are no straight uh, lines rather no isometric lines in the in the base figures. It is something skewed it is slightly different. This is what we are going to be seeing uh, drawing the isometric projection for. Again we start with the top the reference rectangle simple. So, we draw the reference rectangle say this rectangle which is B, C, R and Q and now you will actually know the distances these angles do not matter these angles have no significance when we are drawing the isometric projections you cannot measure them there is no way we can measure them. So, what we will just do is we will measure this distance we will measure this distance and we will mark it here say this is E and this is F. So, this becomes parallel ok sorry the, we just join it the, there is no parallel right now. This is the shape top one which we have taken. Now, we will drop the height. So, whatever this height is let us assume this is the height and now Q R is going to be parallel and we will draw drop the height again. So, this is the surface that we are going to get now this R F is going to be parallel. So, you can draw a parallel line you drop the height again draw a parallel and you get this point again parallel to this drop the height these are going to be hidden lines so dotted ones and then ok maybe I must have committed some mistake but this is going to be parallel to this. So, you arrive at this final final figure for this object which is not a regular one but a straight prism by just following the concept the fundamental of parallel lines remain parallel in isometric projection. We knew Q R is parallel to this one this is parallel to this all the heights are parallel we took that this is parallel to this one and say this is parallel to this one that is what we are doing here just trying parallel lines. Now, suppose if it was kept in some other manner in such a way that we had to first draw this say like uh, if it was lying on HP simple thing the same thing, but we will just draw this figure here right nothing exactly the same process, but we will just draw it here and again as I said parallel lines remain parallel. So, you will start dropping the heights and you will be drawing the parallel line. So, the parallel to this ok parallel 
parallel again and in the bottom you will see it becoming parallel. Very simple. You get the exact figure. It is different because it is kept differently. There is no difference in the object, but since it is kept differently and we are viewing it from one angle which is from the or origin side, we will see it, but the fundamental remains. The parallel lines will remain parallel and the ones which are parallel to the axis will be seen as parallel to the axis and that is going to be our starting point always. You cannot start by drawing the non-isometric lines. We will always be starting by drawing the isometric lines. We have because that is the reference. So, whenever we are drawing the reference rectangle for example, this one we have to assume that or we have to keep it in such a way that it is here. Now, for example, we have a, a hexag hexagon which we are starting with uh, ok. So, maybe I will take the, the hexagon one here ok this is the pentagon. Now, what happens if we have this pentagon here? How do we start drawing it? There is nothing which apparently seems uh, you know uh, parallel to the to the axis there are, there are no isometric lines in the top. So, what we will do here is we will draw this reference rectangle ok the one which encloses this entire object. Now, what we see here is this 1, 2, 3 and 4. These 4 points they come on this reference rectangle while this one does not does not matter. So, what we will start by doing is I have this ok. It could be anything I, I could be picking up any any of these 3 conditions I am taking this one because here we have no side which is parallel to the to the axis. So, I am starting with this one. What we will do? Simply I will draw this reference uh, rectangle say this. You will have to draw it exactly when you draw it and we will start marking these points 1, 2, say 3, 4 and then we will measure this distance just as we did in case of circle. So, we get this point 5. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, I arrive at this pentagon ok. This is the pentagon which I have arrived at. Now, the same principle I drop the heights. So, because we know that this height is it is a straight prism. So, it is here and the next step parallel lines. So, parallel I drop the height parallel and I drop the height again parallel and again. So, when you draw you will actually be drawing accurate and you will get the parallel lines and this is how a pentagonal prism kept in any condition can be drawn here. These ones are simpler because here the reference rectangle whatever we draw say for example, this one it will have all the points on the rectangle. So, no need to measure it like here. Other thing is that this line is actually parallel to one of the reference lines. So, when you start drawing it you can actually draw this rectangle ok maybe here and then you will very conveniently be able to locate the the pentagon ok. So, you take it down draw the parallel lines again and you get the the final object again. This is simpler all what uh, we doing here is we are drawing these reference rectangles in which certain planes can be put if you are able to arrive at any one set of parallel lines you can derive the rest of the ones by just following this parallel line principle which is of most common use when we are doing this isometric projection. So, this is uh, one of these examples we can look at any other example for that matter. So, this is a triangular prism here and it is kept in the uh, in the HP and 
it is parallel to both HP and VP. So, what we will draw? We will start by drawing this. Okay. So, we draw a reference rectangle here. Now, I am going to draw the reference rectangle here first. This is the reference rectangle. Now, I will draw this reference triangle. Okay. And we will draw this, this one. maybe something like this okay and then so this is this is how we are going to see this triangular prism and you can actually draw this the the hidden lines this is how you will arrive at this if it was any under other condition we would have arrived at that it could be kept like this so if we if i am drawing it like this I can draw it very simply. Again, the parallel lines. All you have to do is keep identifying where those parallel lines are and how will you be drawing the shapes. Very simply, you just have to identify where are those lines which are parallel to the isometric lines, the axis. We draw them first, we derive the reference rectangle in which the other points are going to be contained and then we build the rest of the object around them. Now, you might say that this is this is simpler because these are prisms, pyramids are, are going to be arrived at in a very similar fashion for just assuming that the pyramid is going to be chiseled out of a prism. So, that is what we are going to be seeing in the next lecture where we will be talking about prisms and other kind of objects as well. So, that is all for this lecture. Thank you very much for joining me and we will again meet in the next lecture where we will be discussing about the other objects and how do we derive their isometric projections. Thank you.